teens. Yes, a woman, right. Now, uh, supposedly, from what I hear, the women that uh, are even above and beyond the 30s are also ho pretty horny. But then they got to watch their hormonal levels. If they're approaching menopause, which I don't know why they don't just call women a pause, why is it men a pause, they have a tendency because of lack of estrogen to get dry. But estrogen is not in control of libido, testosterone is. And people don't realize that women have testosterone also, mm. just in different amounts. Less. Well, it's than that one form of estrogen, the estrogen that actually causes problems, such as breast cancers and stuff of that nature, for women. Now, now uh, uh, speaking of testosterone. It's on fat, too. Yeah. Speaking of testosterone. And then when you get the fat, you make more because the estrogen is made from the fat. Yeah. Then there's there's something that fascinates me called brown fat, which is actually good for you. Good for it. It's like an organ. It, it, it actually has a function in the body. Helps burn regular fat. Yeah, yeah, brown fat. I have to look into that. But uh, speaking of dihydrotestosterone, which is uh, supposedly, supposedly a bad testosterone, contributing to male pattern baldness and benign uh, prostatic hyperplasia, right? Uh, B H P, uh, D H T. Yeah, yeah. Uh, enlargement of the prostate is caused by dihydrotestosterone. Uh, a large amount of it increase. Uh, Heidi Stevenson told me that there there are heart receptors mm -hmm. specifically for dihydrotestosterone. So what she was saying is there there has to be a need for dihydrotestosterone yeah, in the human not body. Total culprit can't be a total culp culprit, otherwise why would there be receptors on your heart for, for uh, DHT? Right. So good point, Heidi Stevenson, uh, salute to uh, a homeopath from... And I hope you understood what she said about the things that, you know, uh, a, a lot of people understand they are used for certain things. Those are the emergency things, like arnica and, and calendula, they, yes. You use those for these things. You keep but them. But otherwise, when you're diagnosing for a person, it's totally individual. You keep it in reserve, those other things. No, it, they are for emergencies. First right. aid, okay. aconite, arnica, calendula. These things are well, used well, she said for silly, certain things. Silly, like shock, you would use aconite. Well, she said it wouldn't hurt if somebody has brittle nails and, and hair that's to use silica, silica. silicea, which is silica. It wouldn't hurt, or the what is it? The Dr. Schuster's cell salts. Cell salts. It's it's a mineral supplement. No, well, it you doesn't don't go hurt. prescribing homeopathics like you do allopathics. You know what I mean? It's not the certain, same way. Certain symptoms. That's not how it goes. Uh, salute, in an emergency. Sal case. Saluting Heidi Stevenson, homeopathic uh, uh, nutritional practitioner expert from the country of Scotland. Uh, that was uh, yes, yeah, Scotland. That was on the Gary Null show, as seen on the Gary Null show, and uh, has been quoted by Gary Null and also my right-hand administrator for the Facebook group Holistic Health Talk. Okay, Heidi Stevenson, I salute you with the lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh from Ireland, and uh, <coughs> let's see. Um, and also my administrator from the International Brotherhood of Polyvans, all my administrators, Ken Thiessen, uh, Surrenda Huda, uh, uh, Chris Falcone, and the rest of them, all of them. Now, let us sink our teeth into these readings. But uh, that's it, Chisler's Hall of Shame. The last Chisler's Hall of Shame, until I get more, would be the uh, the girls, the females, exploiting men, uh, uh, pretending to be interested in them, um, misrepresenting themselves, and uh, which is bearing false witness against thy neighbor, I believe, mm. just to extract <clears throat> free favors and dinner and drinks. Shame on you, along with T-Mobile, uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame and PSE&G of New Jersey. So.
Experts on information technology security advise frequent password changes. But why would the new password <clears throat> be any more secure than the old one? So many factors are involved. Let's make two assumptions. First, you're an ordinary citizen and no experts are targeting you. Second, you're already exercising caution. You have a completely different password for each website that is important to protect, such as banks and credit cards, shopping sites, with payment data, email accounts, etc. All of your passwords are strong. Frequent changing of those passwords provides little benefit because a hacker who manages to break into one account usually won't be able to break into the others anyway. The change would only limit the number of days he or she has access to that one account. So even a weekly change, which would be big effort for you, wouldn't help much. Hackers can get everything they want from an account in minutes. But if you use the same garden variety password everywhere, changing often, unless you do something obvious like adding a character to the end of the old password, will help. But not because it will be harder to break. Rather, a hacker will be slowed accessing your other accounts unless you make the switch to all your passwords at once, which will have the opposite effect. Regardless, it never hurts to change a password. You never know. True. Maybe someone, an ex-intimate perhaps? Yes, that knows how to hack. Has quietly obtained it and is simply monitoring an account reading your email or whatever. Quietly attained it or sneakily attained it, maybe. If that gives you the willies, you can't change too often. If your name is William, you must get the willies a lot. Huh? If your name is willies, you get the willies often, and you have a little willy. I hope not. Or maybe a big willy. You know? I don't want to shed any more my jiggle balls. <laughs> Here's an interesting, a little, uh, slightly interesting thing I found. At first I was pretty upset to learn that the federal government was monitoring records of all our phone calls. Yes. But what do I know? I'm just an ordinary citizen. Our senators and representatives approve this stuff. And then when it gets leaked to the public, and the public gets upset. They backpedal. Quicker than you can say CIA, NSA, FBI. Mm -hmm. But then it occurred to me that there may be a, sliver, a silver lining in all of this. The government can take all these phone records and track down and then prosecute all those robocallers and phone scammers who call us a half a dozen times a day. Now that's something I could really rally around. Oh yeah. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Because the do not call thingy is a bunch of bullshit. Doesn't work. <sighs> and now they're allowed to call cell phones. Yeah. And you have to pay for it. Yeah. How about that? Well, if, if you don't... I could recognize a soliciting phone number. And uh, if I don't recognize a number, uh, I usually... Yeah, but they hide that now. I usually let... Oh, as in blocked call? They hide the number, yeah. Sneaky of them, isn't it? Yeah. Block call. And, you, and if you have a cell phone and you don't have unlimited free minutes, you have to pay for it. Like like poll people that have uh, what is it called assure assure assurance assurance wireless mm -hmm. something like that assured wireless assurance and that other one there's two of them right there. yeah and you you gotta pay for it you don't get that many minutes and you gotta pay even if you listen to your voicemail they charge you that's another thing mm. the company that um, 
and they want to make sure that you make a call at least every six day, 60 days or they'll take away the phone. In other words, you can't just have it as a, nick, as a tchotchke or a knick-knack si sitting on your shelf. Right. You've got to use it or you lose it all. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, that's not a problem. Well, it's not a problem, but uh, it, it was sold yeah. as an emergency thing. It was not meant yeah. to bullshit and hang on air 24-7, right. like everywhere you go, you know, everywhere you go, all you see is people, mostly young people. They don't care about anything around them. They don't care who's around them. They, the environment, eh. The world is nothing to them, but their little monitor screen on their smartphone, that's important to them. And they're always texting, texting, texting. And I am really happy when the cops pull them over mm -hmm. and give them a whopping fine for texting while they're driving because the fact that they text all the time anyway is very antisocial. They did a study, you know. They found out that even having the radio on in the car affects you. Yeah, you daydream. Let alone texting you, and hands-free phone and all the other day, things. You daydream, uh, you know, you might think of, the song might remind you of something. You should really pay attention to driving. Uh -huh. You know, concentration. Yeah. If you're doing one thing, then do it. Because hey, and that's the your ability. If the accident's your fault, you're the one that gets hit with the surcharge. Is there anyone in the United States who remembers our country as it was after World War II? No, I'm not that old. We were the strongest, most democratic envied and feared nation in the world. You're talking about most likely Truman Eisenhower administrations. And there were there were good days. I mean there were good times. Eisenhower was the last of the so called uh, nice guy Republicans. Uh, uh, Nixon wasn't that bad, but eh, Eisenhower was he was a good egg. Well Nixon had some Decent policy. Some. Some. But he was a crook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am not a crook. Remember that? Uh. Yeah, no, no. He, yeah, uh, Eisenhower. Dwight D. Eisenhower was the last of the nice guy Republicans. What happened to us? Uh, How did we corruption? become yeah. the most hated nation in the universe? This is a good article. Does anybody remember the KGB? Communism? Or Big Brother? <clears throat> It was President Ronald Reagan who was responsible for bringing communism to its knees, yeah. and Russia began to change. Yeah. I well, disagree with that. I disagree with that, and also, he's the one responsible for shifting the tax burden from the rich to the middle class and the poor in the 1980s. Now, our nation is in danger of becoming tangled in a situation as dangerous as that which existed in Russia and other European nations. Our lives are no longer our own. Our phones, computers, bank accounts, emails, personal files, financial reports are all under surveillance, legally and illegally, illegally depending on the interpretation of the judge involved. Our school, school children don't seem to understand what our country represents. Our children do not fully respect their teachers, nor do their parents try to instill pride in their country? Our national security is at risk every day of our lives. Something has to be done, and it must happen soon. Political bickering is destroying our nation. Wake up, America, before it's too late. Don't let our enemies win. Well, um, the proof is in the pudding, and... Uh the pudding to me is the fact that the, uh, the Republican Congress has been uh, obstructionist with every every positive program and bill that is uh, presented by uh, President Barack Obama. They they have sabotaged everything good, and that's proof enough 
to clean house, to clean out the barn. Clean out the barn, baby. In 2000. The system needs to undergo a massive change. A massive bowel movement. 2014 and 2000. Yeah, 2014. We need to get the Republicans out of the House and Senate very badly. Or else it's really going to be chaos and doom and gloom. Well, nothing will get done anyway for that matter. Unless it's written by Alec and the other corporations. Well, the problem is people have to think outside the two-party system because ah. that's how we got. We have to get the money out of politics. Money and no more parties. As long as you and have ways to bring the people who are running before the public. As long as you have free. campaign contributions from the fat cats, you will have corruption in politics. Mm, bingo. It's very simple. Very simple. That's why nothing has ever been done. Yeah, too simple. So look to the uh, progressive independence. And money should not be a factor in who gets elected and holds office. Money should not be the factor. Ability, the, br the brains, what's between their ears, and ability should be the factor. Merit. Not moolah. Merit. The Supreme Court on Thursday unanimously threw out attempts to patent human genes, siding with advocates who say that the multi-billion dollar biotechnology industry should not have exclusive control over genetic information found inside the body. This reminds me of Dr. Salk when they said you should patent your polio vaccine. And he said, you cannot patent the sun. So what you're trying but to... But Monsanto and the others have tried to, haven't they? So what you're trying to say is the demons of capitalism want to make a, pro a profit in a greedy way off of everything, including Mother Nature and what God creates. Water, water. It's theirs, not ours. Oh yeah, the uh, the air. It's theirs, not the ours. The CEO, the CEO of Nestle, said that people do not have a right to drinking water because Nestle's is trying to buy up all the uh, the springs mm. for, uh, for drinking water. You know, in the world, they want to control it. Well, so does T. Boone Pickens. So if you can control the drinking water and the food supply, you have total control over humanity, perhaps. Yes? Yes. Si, senor? Si, senor. You have total control over humanity. But the High Court also approved, for the first time, the patenting of synthetic DNA, handing a victory to researchers and companies looking to come up with ways to fight for and profit from medical breakthroughs that could reverse life-threatening diseases such as breast or ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. The decision sets a fair and level playing field for open and responsible use of genetic information. At the same time, it does not preclude the opportunity for innovation in the genetic world and should be seen as an important clarifying moment for research and the healthcare industry. The High Court's judgment, written by Justice Clarence Thomas, conservative, conservative and lazy of all the judges, he says nothing, he does nothing. But he gets paid. But he gets paid. And he does not recuse himself when his wife, who is a big uh, corporate uh, whatever, oh, really? uh, uh, has a, an interest in things that come before him. So he's pussy whipped? Probably so. So he's, he's even lazier than the Republican Congress. He's lazier than Antonin Scalia. 
Well, Anthony Scalia has got all that blubber around him. Maybe yeah. that's what slows him down. Yeah, I think so. Or, or unless it's something that he's passionate about, which is usually the wrong thing. Yes, it is. Then he has energy. Yes. Right. The High Court's judgment, written by Clarence Thomas, reverses three decades of patent awards by government officials. It also throws out patents held by Salt Lake City based Myriad Genetics Incorporated involving a breast cancer test brought into the public eye recently by actress Angelina Jolie. No, oh, brother. Her That's... revelation yeah. that she had a double mastectomy after re discovering she carried a defective BRCA1 gene that puts her at high risk but of developing breast and ovarian cancer. It, 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 if, if the referee didn't see it, no, no, that's the wrong analogy. She didn't have it. She didn't have anything wrong with her breasts when she had the double mastectomy. Correct. You know, if it's not there, yet it's still not there. Right. Thomas said, Myriad's assertion that the DNA it isolated from the body for its proprietary breast and ovarian cancer tests were patentable. It had to be dismissed because it violates patent rules. The court has said that laws of nature, uh -huh. natural phenomena, <laughs> Phenomena, phenomena. And abstract ideas are not patentable. Therefore, you cannot patent the sun. Of course Or not. the water. Or the air. Yeah, things that God owns that uh, are, are inherent rights. But if you're a CEO like, like the one over at Nestle's, you Everything make up belongs. your own rules. Everything belongs to him. And don't forget, Nestle's... Uh, pays for the cacao beans uh, purchased and, 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 and produced by uh, uh, companies that indulge in child labor and slavery. And do not forget it. How come, uh, Reverend Bill, how come uh, the mad, uh, insane, uh, crazed gunmen always open fire on innocent people, but they never target CEOs, the bad guys. The evil, yeah. bad guy, demonic, greedy CEOs of these big corporations. They n nobody. They they never specifically target the true bad guys. Well, if you believe it's the devil's world, as the Bible says, yeah, uh, then obviously the devil is not going around uh, uh, killing bad people. He wants innocent people to be killed, good people. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're if you're of the flesh, like I was talking before about the dating scene with the uh, the women, the, you know, the, the restaurant whores and and the um, the green card whores and, and whatever, these are obviously people that are not spiritual. They are not living in the spiritual realm. They are they're materialists. Living, they're yeah, they're materialists. They're living in the flesh. They're living in the world, mm -hmm. Satan's world. Well, the mm -hmm. same thing goes for all these CEOs, all these capitalists mm -hmm. and Republicans. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were joking before about the stovepipe. They're, they're not talking to the God of the Bible. No, no, no. No way. So. We, we hold that a naturally occurring DNA segment is a product of nature, not a patent eligible merely because it has been isolated, Thomas said. However, the court gave Myriad a partial victory, ruling that while naturally occurring DNA was not patentable, synthetically created DNA, known as C DNA, can be patented because it is not naturally occurring. Mm -hmm. The company used its patents to come up with the BRCA analysis test which looks for mutations on the breast cancer predisposition gene. Myriad sells the only BRCA gene test, which costs around $3,000. Now, to you numbskulls out there, 
the BRCA gene has nothing to do with broccoli, which I happen to love. That I'm dumb. So fluorophane. Very anti-carcinogenic. Correct. Indole three carbonyl sulfurophane. And I yes. believe Alzheimer's also. In the cruciferous uh, vegetable family. Oh, by the way, uh, I believe it was Heidi Stevenson that told me uh, uh, people with autoimmune afflictions can go as high as 10,000 international units of, of vitamin D3. So 5,000 is now the new norm, recommended dose, but you can go as high as 10,000. But I would take 10,000 of the vitamin A palmitate. I, I would definitely take A with D. Very important for the immune system to have both. Anyway, finish up here. Opponents said that the company has used its patent to keep other researchers from working with the BRCA gene to develop other tests. The challenged patients, I mean, excuse me, the challenged patents would have expired in 2015. Yeah. Today, the court struck down a major barrier to patient care and medical innovation, said Sandra Park, a lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union. Women's Rights Project. Because of this ruling, patients will have greater access to genetic testing and scientists can engage in research on these genes without fear of being sued. Hmm. American Medical Association President Dr. Jeremy A. Lazarus agreed. Lazarus. Come forth, Lazarus! Hold on. Come forth, Lazarus. That's what Jesus said when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead. When I think he was dead. Sound like a didgeridoo? Oh, go ahead. He was dead for maybe like uh, three days or whatever the hell it was. And the, the, la the ladies around said, Oh, by now he stinketh. He stinketh? <laughs> when Jesus was going to go raise him. Um, you're going to like the way you look. What was that company? Uh, 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 wait a minute, that's uh, Joseph A. Bank? No, Men's Warehouse? Men's Warehouse. Hey, I'm the CEO of Men's Warehouse. You gotta like the way you look. I guarantee it. All right, let me finish. <laughs> let, me, let me finish here. Go ahead, finish up. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I made that stovepipe. <laughs> removing the patents on the building blocks of life ensures that scientific discovery and medical care, based on insights into human DNA, will remain freely accessible and widely disseminated. Okay, you finished? Yeah. Now it's time for our break. Uh, well, actually, not my. Well, yeah, my break too, because I get to visit the little boys' room. It and is make time. A whiz. Yeah, make it, a whiz. It, it is yeah. time. For, oh, by the way, my uh, my friend Shirley Chen from Shanghai, China, says the uh, the Chinese use uh, human urine diluted with water for fertilizer to fertilize the vegetables, plants. Sounds good. Now, if if, if they use animal manure as fertilizer, I guess it's kind of almost the same. Whatever. I would say that in the cocoa, the poop, there's probably a lot more vitamins and minerals and stuff. Because of all the supplements humans might be taking. Might or and you the know, better quality the and, and well supposedly the better quality food they eat over the, over the livestock. Supposedly. Anyway, it's time for uh, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Excuse me. Gastronomic delight known as lunch. And then we'll we'll be back with William H. Morrill the third.